Hi, I have an important question for you. In this world where it seems all hope seems to be waning, where do you place your hope? Is it in your government? Maybe your friends? Or is it just luck? Well, today we're going to discuss about how God is our real hope in time of need. Stay tuned. And welcome to this week's broadcast of Living Hope Today. I'm so glad you joined me. You know, you are always welcome to be with us. And we love this time when we can just share some encouraging words and songs with you that uh, hopefully will fill your heart with a little hope. We all need that, don't we? Well, you know, this world is getting so dark. And our Lord, I believe, is coming for us very soon. And we all need each other to support one another and, above all, trust God to help us during these trying times we are facing. And uh, we're going to share some encouraging news with you today in my devotional on the theme, You Are My Hope. So I hope you'll stay with us. Now, I also want to encourage you to be sure, if you haven't already, to hit the like button comment, and share buttons below the player here on our Facebook page. Uh, We would love to hear from you. Also, we want to urge you to share this post with your friends and family. You know, that would be a real blessing to us. Uh, Also, please take note, if you are friends with us above, it says friends, well, then you've already done that. If not, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you will always know when we're airing a new broadcast. Uh, The same goes for our YouTube friends and at our our YouTube channel. Uh, Be sure to do the same thing. Like it, write a comment, and share our YouTube channel, the broadcast here. You can also hit the bell to receive notices. Well, this is, as I mentioned, is probably the best way to uh, share it with uh, folks Uh, and let people know about our program. And uh, at the same time, it helps the algorithm for the playback on this. When when you hit a like or you comment or you share, that ups the algorithm a little bit so that our broadcast will be seen a little bit more. So I hope that you'll do that. Do that for me, won't you? All right. Well, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, I want to share with you something everyone needs to realize, and that Jesus is our hope for whatever we may be facing in life. You know, our world right now is in a bad situation. Everyone's eyes are on the Middle East and the war, not only there, but uh, also in, in Ukraine and Europe. And we are seeing lawlessness everywhere right now. Uh, the, you, the mass shootings that we had a couple weeks ago, the, the riots that are going on now, there are rumors of, of wars and uh, just so much more. It is not really uncommon uh, to hear the news that we should be bracing for a possible World War III. I hear it all the time. People talking about it. They're fearful of that. And it brings fear and anxiety that maybe we've never experienced before. So where do we place our hope in a situation like that? Well, on this week's broadcast, I have something very encouraging news for you. And uh, so I hope you'll stay with us for this very encouraging episode of Living Hope Today. But before we um, uh, go any further, let's get started with some inspiring gospel music by some good friends of ours. They are Samoan native singers, uh, the Katinas. And I want you to listen as they sing about their hope and their love for Christ. Listen as they sing, There's Nothing Better Than You. Be sure to stay with us. i 
And that was our friends, the Katinas from Nashville, Tennessee, singing for us. And I hope you enjoyed their wonderful ministry of music. They are Samoans from the Samoan Islands, and I uh, hope you enjoyed their wonderful singing. Well, recently I was watching the news on television, and uh, a reporter was interviewing various uh, people on the streets of Chicago uh, to kind of get their take on the numerous reports of the wars going on in the Middle East and to the Ukrainian-Russian war in Europe. In all the protests and the riots and unrest we are seeing in our country and around the world. And as the reporter talked with several people, the fear of things getting worse and what he was explaining to them showed on their faces. And the responses of worry and and, uh, and concern, you could see it. Well, maybe you can identify with this. People are genuinely fear fearful of what we're experiencing in this world right now. Uh, we have no faith in our leaders. Some of us have no faith in our country or the chance of seeing anything return to normal. I said last year, I said after we had the uh, COVID, uh, a, cu a couple years ago after the COVID, that we'll never be going back to normal. It will always be like it is and get worse. You know, for many uh, who are going through maybe this situation right now in their life, there is a loss of hope in almost everything. And as I Watch the responses from these people as the reporter talked to them on the street. My, my immediate thought was that they were experiencing fear and worry for 
the future. It just seems like our world has gone into a no return direction of hopelessness. And it's sad. My heart went out to those people. And I realized they were placing all their hope for the world on better circumstances, maybe the end of the wars, or perhaps a return to better times. Uh, maybe even the election of new leaders that they could place their hope and trust in. But as a follower of Jesus, I couldn't help but think how they need the assurance of Christ, our only hope. You know, when I think of the word hope, I can't go without thinking of the many times I have heard people say to, reassure, to kind of reassure themselves that there is hope in Christ. In reality, when you think about it, our reply to what is going on around us should be like this. Our hope is only is Jesus. Our only hope is Jesus. Our hope is built on our personal relationship with Jesus, knowing he is the only one, the only one, who could take away our worries and discouragements and like no one else could ever do. And when I look at the meaning of hope, I think of the verse that uh, we read in Scripture. Uh, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yeah, hope and faith without hope is really necessary. It is the foundation of our faith in Christ, admitting that he is hope for every situation. He is the hope, when you think of, of our salvation. And without hope, we are merely drifting in an ocean filled with hopelessness. To have hope means to have a desire of good with the expectation of obtaining it, of getting it. Hope without expectation, uh, it, it is really just hollow and really without any substance. You know, uh, we read in Hebrews 6.19, we read this assuring word. Look at this. It says, This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. In other words, don't let that hope go. Hang on to it. Don't be deceived, uh, distracted, or discouraged by all that is going on around us in this world. Hold on to it by faith, trust, and the love and commitment of Christ. Let it be, as we just read, an anchor that holds you no matter how great the storm. And I mentioned a while ago, like in this, this is like a, uh, a sea of lawlessness that's going around here, a sea, uh, a sea of uh, no hope. That's what it feels like for many people. Uh, you know, when I think uh, of an amazing story of hope, uh, I think of uh, Paul and Silas who were in prison while in Philippi. You know, they were beaten, they were flogged, they were chained and chained and they were thrown into jail. Uh, through it all, that and what any person would see as a hopeless situation turn into really a joyous hope. What would seem like certain despair, instead, they rejoiced. They sang and rejoiced to God despite the circumstances. But why? Because they had hope that God would bring them through, which seemed like an impossible situation. You know, for Paul and Silas, they had three kinds of hope to choose from. They had a choice of, one, no hope, where they would give in to the circumstances they were in. Two, that they could choose a false hope, which uh, would be put, uh, which would be to put faith uh, in man or a chance or a, 
uh, or a gamble in up and a possible outcome. That's what that would be under false hope. But the third choice that they could have, the only correct decision is a sure hope. Now this is where we place our hope and our faith in Jesus, his word, his truth and power. Yes, you know, when we go through uncertain times, worry or doubt, if we depend on God, we can know that he is the source of hope. And we can, we can rejoice in him and the hope he promises us. Now, if we have hope, we can be filled with joy and with peace, no matter, no matter what's going on in the world. So I ask you this question today. What kind of hope do you have? Are you confident that God has it all under control? You know, there is no need to worry. There's no need to be frightened by what's going on around us. Instead, put your faith and trust in Jesus. Always remind yourself of this precious promise God gives us. And I want you to look at this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. You know, today, I want you to remind yourself not to place your hope in the world, the world system, or any human being in this world. Instead, rejoice in the hope that God gives to you. Place your hope in the living God and his power to save and make everything right in his time, in his way. What will you do? Will you do that today? I trust that you will. You know, I want to thank you for joining us in this week. And I pray that this broadcast has been a special encouragement and blessing to your life. And I want to encourage you to share this post with someone. You know who may need to hear this word of encouragement today. I hope you'll do that for me, won't you? And now until next week and our special, very special broadcast that we'll have on the holiday. We'll be right here for Thanksgiving. I hope you'll join me. Until then, may the Lord bless and keep you.